Hey everyone, this is Tommy Black, and welcome to Five or More Questions, episode number 26. On this show, I talk with artists about their current projects, stories they've never told before, and their connection to the Viper Room on the Sunset Strip. Today, we're talking to Mickey Avalon, so here we go. Jimmy was a junkyard dog indeed. Jenny got pregnant, couldn't keep a child, so Jimmy got a gun and cut the whole thing off. Hey, Mickey. Golly, hey, how you doing? Party Good. So hard, she uh, what are you up to right now? Uh, I'm home from uh, I'm home from tour. I've been on a uh, tour for a while with Dirt Nasty, and uh, I've been traveling internationally a lot. I just got back from uh, Barcelona for a friend's wedding, and uh, I've been all over. But right now, I'm just uh, home for a little bit. Uh, I've got the show that, you know, about coming up at the Pipe Room on September 20th. So that's always fun to play at home and uh, on, on the Sunset Strip. Other than that, I'm kind of uh, off for right now. I'm, I'm supposed to actually go to Russia uh, at the end of August for a, a rap festival out there. And then other than that, I'm kind of off for a while. So I, I, uh, I, paint, I paint on my spare time. Cool. Paint pictures. Do you show your art anywhere at a gallery or anything like that, or? or you just um, I've shown a few things. Uh, I showed some stuff at the Mayfair Hotel, and I sh- and then at a place called Gabba Gabba Gallery, uh, also out there near like downtown. And uh, I'm just kind of working on it. I've, I've been painting since I was a teenager, so I, I just, uh, I mean, that will come at some point. The, mm-hmm. All the showing and stuff. I've also just been making a bunch of songs and. Uh, putting them out i put out like a new record uh this year i just put it out myself so it's on all the places that you could get music but it just doesn't i put it just out on my like um social media and stuff so it doesn't really have like a big push behind it or anything it's kind of better to do things that way i mean distributing it yourself it's you don't have to no one else gets any pieces of it or anything it kind of works out better these days that way it's everyone's doing it you know yeah, I mean, it's like, also, you could just put stuff, I mean, I probably, I can put out stuff a lot quicker, like, when I was, uh, when yeah, when I was on Interscope, like, it just, trying to put out my second record took, like, years, and I can, I can put out, like, three records in that amount of time, you know? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You're recording with Dirt Nasty again, or you're doing a tour with Dirt Nasty again, right? Yeah, we, yeah we're on tour, and we recorded some new songs, like, we put out a little EP this year, and then, uh, and then I put out my own stuff. So just kind of uh, when we, if we, whenever we can get in together, we like to. But you know, uh, we both have different schedules. So mm-hmm. uh, go and record uh, with my buddy Eli. Uh, he's a producer. His name's uh, Smoothie, and he does all the production. And he's just right down the street. So uh, when I'm home, I try to like go do like a song a day. Like if I'm not doing anything else. Wow, cool. Um, now the, the earlier days, I remember, um, do you remember Frankie O'Reilly, the sound guy, Frankie? I'm, I'm better with faces, like, uh... But Frankie O'Reilly was a sound guy at the Viper Room. He, he's a uh, Scottish guy, uh, with an, you know... He's oh, yeah, a, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, he's a I character. Know. Me, and, me yeah. and Frankie and I used to do a club called Frankie and Tommy's Social Club. And we, you played and White Star would play these shows there, like early on... By, well, not early, early on, but, you know, what, 15, eight, 15-ish, 16, maybe 17 years ago. But those White Star shows, that was, that was an awesome, awesome scene with you and White Star there. I thought, I thought they were fun. Yeah. <laughs> I remember I went, they were early. I mean, I don't know how early on that was, but I, I remember you coming out, you came out of the DJ booth and you, like, crawled over the tables. It was like Iggy Pop or something and crawled on stage. It was intense. It was a great. Yeah, that's like definitely some of the early stuff because uh, me and Cisco made a bunch of music together too. Me and Cisco Adler, like he did a bunch of stuff on my first two records, and uh, and then they were, you know, they were like a cool rock and roll band. Uh, yeah, I thought that. I think maybe a lot of people didn't take them seriously because they were like, you know, rich kids from like famous parents and stuff. Mm-hmm. But uh, I thought the music was uh, really good, and uh, and then like you said, like the scene it. Uh, it made on the Sunset Strip was was cool. It was intense. It was like, well, Roy Orbison's son was the drummer Orby, and I, yeah. I don't know who, but they were they were cool guys, and the music was Dwayne, gr- uh, Dwayne, ba- Dwayne Bennett. Oh yeah, yeah, 
Yeah, the the music was was great, and he was great front man. That was that was a cool band. I liked that band a lot. And then yeah. you tied in with him. It just was a whole. I mean, the club was just full of cool people. It was it was a really it's a fond memory of mine of that club. You know. Yeah, I think those things just happen like organically. You know, what I mean, you can't really like put your finger on it or uh, or really try to recreate. You know, like. Uh, at different times, like a, a city will just kind of like, you know, whether it's like, like you're saying the Stooges, like Detroit, you know, MC5 and Stooges and all yeah. this stuff. Or, or you know, uh, Sunset Strip in the 80s, you know, with Guns N' Roses and Molly Crew and all that. I think not to put, uh, put us in that same uh, group, but just like, I think it just kind of happens organically, I guess. Yeah. I never, because I don't play any instruments or sing or anything, I, I never really put myself in that. Uh, world, it just kind of happened, I guess. Yeah, but it was it was definitely yeah, it was legit. Were, yeah. <laughs> or let's start earlier. Um, did you you know record the stuff yourself, or did you have producers you worked with earlier on, or? Uh, just go work with producers, uh, but I mean it was all like in people's houses and stuff, not not like really fancy studio studios or anything. So I would just kind I didn't really have anything anywhere to be or anything to do. I was just trying to you know, make a few bucks to take care of myself and my, my daughter. And I just would, uh, go, go to different people's houses, I guess. My first manager, his name's Kevin Wolf. You probably know him. Mm. Uh, he would just, uh, I knew some people and then he would just say, go to this guy's house and either we would click or we didn't, but most of the time we, we click, you know, uh-huh. and then we just, I just kind of got a bunch of songs in in the can and then we just picked from them to put them out i still got a bunch of shit that that never came out that that i think's just as good as the stuff that did come out wow people would like to hear that yeah uh, i'll get it now you can just put shit out like you know uh and if there's uh like lice you can just put if, you, if you're not making money off of it uh it's not really an issue you know mm-hmm. you can just release like, it yeah, just like release it or, or um, I don't know, because it's not like you're gonna make like a box set now or anything. It'd be more just like dumping it on, uh, on the internet or something. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah, exactly. What and I remember Beardo too. Beardo played. What happened to Beardo? Uh, he he he's he's like a great musician. So yeah, that's always just was like the dumbed down version of him. But uh, <laughs> he, play, he plays in a band. Uh, he plays in. The guy from the Strokes band, they're, they're called the Voids. Cool, cool. Julian Casablanca's band, yeah. Cool, he's always a good guy. Cool. So, of course, with them, yeah. Uh, I don't know if he plays on the records or if he just uh, tours with them, but uh, I would assume he plays on the records, too. Cool gig. What, like, working with Cisco, were you guys coming up with beats together and stuff like that, or... Um, you know? uh, usually the producers would do, like, the beat. Like, I might, like chime in like with a la 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 like i'll make it sound a little more like this or like that but usually they kind of do the music and i'll do the lyrics or mm-hmm. i mean we kind of maybe work together at some parts like on the hook or whatever but usually i'm not really like a musician and then most of the producers i work with aren't necessarily writers or maybe they are but they're not like rappers so uh kind of just I do my thing, they do their thing, and then we kind of meet at the middle at some point. They cover the technical, you cover the creative, or it, bl- it blends, it goes both ways. But whatever you're doing, it's working. <laughs> Thank you. I'm, I, try, I try not to, like, I try to just kind of not, I try not to do, like, what's, like, going on this week, you know? Like, just kind of do what I've always done, and uh, and then if it starts sounding like, like the person I'm working with is like trying to play what's on the radio like this week. I try to kind of steer away from that Mm -hmm. because A, I don't want to do that. And B, what's on the radio this week isn't going to be on the radio next week. And uh, when we get our shit out, it could be three weeks and then we're already, it's, you know what I mean? And then it just dates it. Like I don't want to do anything that really like dates it to a specific uh, time, you know. No, and it holds up. But what's already on the radio has already happened, you know. And exactly, yeah. And you're you, it holds up. You just do your own thing. That's all you can do. That's the best, you know. Yeah, like I like, I just like. I mean, I like so many different things musically, 
and and there is like things out now that are cool like i'm not saying that it's just there's like there's tricks with any kind of art there's like tricks to make something sound cool and then that trick could just be like uh you know like a like you could hear it and go oh that's cool like that sounds like but it's not there's really not much there like it's just something that came fast and will go fast you know and it might be like big now but it's it's not gonna last it's not like the things that are gonna last have already established you know like guitars drums you know shit like that if you just take like a oh take a drum machine and, and do it something like with it that they're just doing like right now that thing's gonna go away you mm -hmm. know mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. like oh we're gonna do trap sounding drums like if you're not from the trap maybe that ain't gonna be like that ain't your shit you know mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's a bad tale to chase you know but they still sound cool so yeah. i but it's like and i like do it you know do a track like do something oh that's cool i kind of like that let's just do that sound and then like move on to the next thing you know yeah no the quality i i was listening to some of your new stuff and the quality is still great you know it's good stuff and that Thank was what you. the dirt nasty you just did like an ep i think right i did that three song ep with dirt nasty and we're kind of you know just i think when we're together we kind of joke around a little more uh more not that it's comedy but a little more humorous and then the stuff i put out myself it was called uh some kind of exciting i put out side a and then side b is about to come out what i did i put each single out uh, by itself and then I, I painted the cover of it so like they're all out as singles and then I took the first uh, seven and then I called it some kind of exciting side A hmm. and then I put the next seven singles out or I think I put out six there's one more about to come out and then that's some kind of exciting B so uh, cool that's my stuff by myself that is from like uh, last year this hmm. year like hmm. up till now and you, you said you, you try to write every day? Well, when I'm here, like, I'm either painting or uh, I, go to the, I go to the studio, which is at my friend's house, Eli, yeah. and uh, we'll just bang out. Like, he'll start playing stuff for me, and, we'll do, and then we'll uh, make a song. And then it was his idea for me to paint the uh, covers because mm -hmm. uh, he's like, you paint, you should uh, do them. And then it was... I didn't have a studio to paint in. So now I do, but I didn't at the time. So in the house, I could just paint with watercolors. So they were just uh, watercolor paintings. So what, like, uh, I would do the painting, and then we would, which would just be like on a 11 by 17 paper, and then we would do the graphic, and then each one, okay, each painting for all those singles, each painting was different, but like the graphic design of it was the same like we'd do a bar on the side it'd be a different each one had like a different color but that's where it would say the the name of the song and then uh and then like my signature and stuff so there's like seven you know 14 different uh covers but it has you can tell they're all in the same group because it has like that bar and the way it like if you just looked up mickey avalon on on itunes or whatever you'd see all these different painting covers with the same bar but just in a different color with a different word in it it'd be like uh davy crockett was one of them uh um i don't know um Billy shakespeare like a lot of them are different names a lot of them are different things uh but just the, I, i'm proud of it I, i'm proud of everything i've done I, I don't think i've ever put out it i've never put out anything i didn't like so uh damn that's know. good that's a good thing that's a strong thing to say that's good you should you should do those at the uh, at the club sometime, maybe some sort of a little some sort of event with the, with your your art there. That would be a cool cool idea. I'd love to do that. We should talk about it uh, when I'm there. Yeah, uh, and I'll see you at Soundcheck and everything. Yeah. I, I totally know who you are when you call it and tell me. I know I'm oh. better with faces, so I didn't know at first. But then Sierra showed me a picture, and I'm like, oh yeah, I know that. Oh, I know oh, that. oh that guy, <laughs> that that lurker. Yep, I've been there for a minute. But so have you. Um, what do you think of when you think of Viper? Or what are some memories, you know, that you have of the Viper? Honestly, what I think of when I think of the Viper room is River Phoenix. But I've never hung out there with River Phoenix nor seen his ghost or anything. 
uh, the shows are always really fun when I play there, and I don't remember all of it, so that's probably uh, good, too. I just, the energy's always, like, really, good. like, the way it is, you know, it's different than the rocks. They're not one's better or worse. They're just totally different. But in the in the Vibe Room, you get that, like, uh, and I mean this in the best way, but you get that kind of, like, sar- like that sardine can, like, pressure cooker, like it's about to pop in it at mm-hmm. second. Mm-hmm. And then you to just toe that line. And, uh, you know, it's for rock and roll or it's good for it to feel like it's about to pop, you know. Yeah. And it, well, it's because you, you have it so full of people. <laughs> yeah. It's like at the Roxy, it's more even if it's going, it's like because it's spread out. Yeah. You know, there could be like young kids there and shit. It's yeah. just like different, you know. Apples I mean? and oranges. Yeah. yeah. But, but they're both cool but yeah exactly but yeah. that's like what i get in in the like the vibe room just like it's just like it's explosive mm-hmm. cool awesome i think like uh you know it's something it's like uh like a destination i remember uh and i'm not name dropping or anything please but do <laughs> Lock Del Rey was on the radio and it's like some sent me the thing and they're like, she's like, you know, like Sunset Strip. It's like, you want to go to the Viper Room and see Mickey Avalon play? And I'm like, fuck, that's cool that I, I made my way into that. Like, uh, so I guess it just kind of is like a landmark, you know? Yeah, yeah. And I'm tied in with it. Yeah, yeah. Someone uh, a couple of weeks ago was saying it's like the Maxis Kansas City of of L.A. You know. Or the, C- yeah. the CBGBs of LA, you know. Or yeah, something. I never access, but I have been to CBGBs before it closed. I saw the I saw the cramps there. Very uh, cool. I was like seventeen, so that was a really fucking long time ago now. But uh, yeah, that same same kind of vibe. That shows, yeah, and that showed with that performance I was referring to. It was a Lux interior crawl from the DJ booth. Uh, <laughs> yep, yeah, that's probably definitely in my uh, subconscious. <laughs> In the reservoir. Um, I've, okay, obligatory uh, question. Have you ever uh, met Jane Fonda, or what? Gotten a response from Jane Fonda regarding that song? I have met. I have met Jane Fonda. She's super uh, nice, and uh, she even talked about me in her book. I met her at uh, a Christmas party, and they play. And I had to play this. They had me play the song, and it was already on a mixtape that she had that her boyfriend had. Uh, made for and that was it was it was a trip for me obviously wow. so yeah you made jane fonda's mixtape that's uh yes that, exactly that, <laughs> that's a mile party uh was her boyfriend's party which was uh, a christmas party sean penn was like you need to come over to jane fonda's party and i'm like i was at a I was at the studio and i'm like i would never leave like to go see someone famous or anything, but this is Jane Fonda, and I got it. I got to go. And the party was like at Ronald Reagan's old house. This wow. crazy in the hills. So it was, it was definitely very surreal. Well, it was also Sean Penn asking you or telling that you. was pretty rad too. Yeah, yeah the whole that, thing that inspires you to go. <laughs> and I had to do like a fake performance, like like it was on the CD, and I just had to like go over it with a mic that wasn't plugged in. Yeah. But it was I, I did it anyhow because it was for Jane Fonda. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. That's very cool. That's yeah, um, cool. Are who? Someone was telling me your does your does your mom handle your business or something like that or who who someone someone no just, my my mom uh, managed like helped manage me a long time ago. I'm, now just uh, me and my chick do most of it, and then I you know I have like a, a what's it called an accountant. I have an accountant and. Uh, and a booking agent, you know, I have I have everything except a manager anymore because I don't need one. It's just a booking agent. If you're like a performing artist, it's really your booking agent that's more important than a manager. So, I mean, I still have like a crew. I just don't, because I'm like locked into what I do, I don't need someone just taking a big chunk of my money to do uh, to take money from my touring that they have nothing to do with, you know? Right, and Sierra helps you with all that stuff, too. Yep. Yeah. She, does, she basically tour manages uh, and then does more stuff. And then when uh, and then when me and Dirt Nasty go on the road, she tour manages for him, too. Wow, cool. And yeah. what, you guys are back together. There was a, uh, a 
a conflict for a while, but you guys are back together and all is good now, right? Yep, it was it was all stupid stuff. I mean, we were really we were really close friends, and I think just like you see on all the like behind the music, just uh, you know, drugs and being in each other's faces, and then throwing money into the mix, and then it's just like everyone starts getting paranoid and delusional. And we just needed to have a break, and now uh, things are are good. Cool. Yeah. Well, you guys have made some good music together so and the shows are a lot more the shows are a lot more fun uh when we're together and especially when we're on the road and you're like traveling it's cool to have like a road dog uh kind of even just even behind the scenes just kind of you know going through an airport is is more fun when you have someone to like that you could like fart on or something (laughs) and then you're by yourself <laughs> yeah day, day-to-day stuff you know at the uh cracker barrel you know yeah it's better there <laughs> with a buddy yeah cool look forward to to the viper room september 20th everybody come out and uh let's talk about like maybe doing an art thing that that'd be awesome like some sort of event i think it'd be cool yeah we would love that we, it would be and then the lounge bar they could put you know, they could be there or just all, all the time, you know, just for, you know, a week or two or something, whatever would work. Or just do an event, you know, just showing it all. We've done things like that before. Yeah, just get some wine and cheese and uh, and get the pictures on the wall. Exactly. Exactly. We've done, like, book signings and things like that, like, cool, you know, just cool different things, you know? Um, cool. Yeah, all right. I'm working on, I'm trying to work on a book, too, like, so we can tie it all in together. But, yeah. That'd be awesome. I always consider you guys guys like part of my like rock and roll family. Awesome. We we appreciate that. Well, we're looking forward to seeing you. It's it's Friday, uh, nine twenty. So uh, yep. looking forward to seeing you. And we'll all be there. So take it easy. Cool. You, I'll see you in a few weeks. Yeah, take it easy. Take it easy. So hard to find. Looks like I'm back on my ass. Don't forget to subscribe to Five or More Questions with Tommy Black on your favorite podcast app and visit ViperRoom.com for upcoming shows. Tina sat front row with all his fight. Soaked him a cape that was fit for a king. Took one too many and he died in the rain. Pretty Peter joined the data. Practice his lines with